so how do you think about, I mean, for you is, is, is incorporating employee advocacy as a component of your overall strategy? Is that relatively new? Like uh, how, do, how do you think about that? How do you think about some of the companies you work with in terms of, is that something that they should be considering? Do you think over time it's going to become more of kind of the, you know, de rigueur as far as like how higher performing recruiting organizations are actually going to market and sourcing and engaging? Yeah. Employee advocacy is super hot right now to, to, to say the, the, the usual thing, right? Um, it's, it's super important um, because it, it, it's really that phase two of it. Um, the problem is that most organizations aren't ready to move to that step yet. Um, and, uh, and they, they still have to figure out and articulate who they are. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. story and message has to be real and felt and supported by employees. Once you have that, then you can activate this army of, of in, inspired individuals who, who love working at a company and feel like you have content worth sharing to their networks, right, um, with. Um, then, then uh, asking an employee advocacy program becomes a lot easier. If you're inherently a good organization with a great culture, well articulated and communi- communicated, um, you know, vision from leadership. The uh, problem is most companies don't have that. Yeah, um, they're still uh, evolving and maturing uh, as people start to understand more of the importance of of of, of hiring well, uh, and then. Uh, ha- having something that inspires people. Like people don't just make job moves uh, for money. Uh, they're they're motivated by something uh, far greater, which is, uh, am I making an impact on the world outside of myself? Right? Am I? Am you know they're they're more volunteers than they are candidates, mm-hmm, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, vo- and volunteers don't don't go and volunteer for an organization unless they really believe in its mission, right? Um, and if you're not communicating that, it's really hard to get um, to turn employees from just employees into uh, into advocates uh, for the company. Um, so yes, it's it's super important. It's it, 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 we were I just had the. Um, we just launched the, the New York City chapter for Talent Brand Alliance yeah. uh, last week, and we we do a, a what's called a lean coffee, right? Where we ask uh, everyone in the room, like, what are some topics that you really want to talk about in this meeting today? Um, by far, employee advocacy was the biggest one, and that's because you know we're in a room full of people who are part of Talent Brand Alliance organization, which means there's at least one person dedicated at that company to building employer brands. So they're being intentional about articulating their culture and, and the experience of working at their companies. So they're at that stage where now they need to formalize the program, get people and employees engaged. But on the practice talent side, the companies I talk to every day, um, most of them, not only do they not have an, uh, an, an, somebody dedicated to do employer branding with them, but they're lucky if they even have enough recruiters to handle the amount of hiring they're doing right now. Um, they're lucky uh, that they, they, one, they don't even have an employer brand budget. Um, they, uh, they're still trying to figure out how to get past just posting on LinkedIn and indeed, um, uh, and, and, and be more proactive about how they hire. Mm-hmm. Um, and so those kind of companies, they're not even ready to do employee advocacy no. yet. Um, right. Because they, they have to still go through the journey of, of, uh, of, of figuring out what their story is. Hey, this is Jason behind the scenes running the mixer board. Just want to say thanks for listening and catch a new Everyone Social Bytecast every week from everyonesocial.com slash blog.